If the bucket bomb, which apparently failed to detonate in the London Underground train, had exploded successfully at Piccadilly Circus, there would have been many casualties. In this short study, we will simulate such an explosion for educational purposes, informing the public and the authorities about the effects. According to the news, an improvised bomb placed in a bucket and left on the floor of an underground carriage in London caused injuries and damages in the London underground train. We don't know yet whether it was an IED, that is, an improvised explosive device meant to destroy and kill by its blast wave and shrapnel, or if it was an incendiary bomb, whose lethal effects are mostly burns and asphyxiation. The Arms Control Center provides an approximate assessment of the effects such an IED may cause so that the authorities in London can take appropriate measures in case another, another such a bomb is found. At the same time, the emergency personnel, the first responders and the general population will get an idea of the destructive effects of such a device so that they can evacuate the possible ground zero at reasonably large distances without exaggerations and panic which would disrupt the social and economic life of London. According to a short video which is now all over the internet, the improvised bomb, we don't call it an improvised explosive device yet, was inside a bucket, half covered by a plastic bag, apparently used to carry the bomb to ground zero, which was on the floor of an underground carriage. The same video shows that the device is on fire before its explosion, while investigators have recovered what appears to be a circuit board from the scene where the device was placed. Apparently, the bomb was either attached to a timer or it was meant to explode by remote control. Judging from the damages caused in the carriage and the injuries sustained by the passengers, the device must have finally acted more like an incendiary bomb, failing to initiate a detonation, although it is still unclear whether it was an ID, that is an improvised explosive device, or it was actually meant to be an incendiary bomb, such as the one found in the Athens Metro in 2012. In any case, the Arms Control Center assumes a conservative scenario, according to which the device was indeed an IED, and that the volume of a sizable bucket, such as the one found in Ground Zero, allows for an ID of roughly 50 pounds of TNT. We will use this conservative re representation for a bucket bomb to estimate the damage such an ID would have caused had it exploded in the open at the center of the Piccadilly Circus, for example. Please note that the damages and injuries caused by a bucket bomb explosion inside the underground carriage would have been much more severe as the walls of the closed carriage would have acted as a tamper, enhancing the effects of the blast wave and the shrapnel. But first, let's give some information about a bucket bomb. Once detected, a bucket bomb should not be dismantled or even approached, as any mistake could trigger an explosion. Since dismantling the bucket bomb is virtually forbidden, the typical method of disarming such a bomb is to destroy it in place or relocate it to a remote area where it can be safely destroyed by experienced bomb disposal personnel. Only authorized law enforcement and bomb disposal personnel should be allowed to approach and handle the explosive device. Once a bucket bomb is located, all people should assume a safety distance from the bomb until authorized bomb disposal personnel disarms or destroys or relocates the bomb to a safe area. We call that distance minimum evacuation distance and we define it as the range at which a life-threatening injury from blast or fragmentation hazards is unlikely. However, even at such distances, non-life-threatening injuries may occur. Let us now define the minimum evacuation distances associated with a bucket bomb modeled in our case as a 50 pound ID. First, we locate our ground zero, 
which in our case was specified as the Piccadilly Circus. The United States Department of Homeland Security classifies minimum evacuation distances into two major categories. First, building evacuation distance, which in our case for a 50 pound ID is 150 feet, roughly 45 meters. So this is our building evacuation distance. And then the second evacuation distance is the outdoor evacuation distance which in our case for a 50 pound ID that distance is 1850 feet roughly 560 meters so the yellow circular zone indicates the outdoor evacuation distance while the red circular zone indicates the building evacuation distance. Building evacuation distances apply to people who are inside buildings while outdoor evacuation distances apply to people who are outdoors, in the streets or in an open field. Another interpretation of these distances is that a building evacuation distance, the red circular zone, is actually a mandatory evacuation distance while on outdoors evacuation distance the yellow zone is a shelter in place distance actually people inside buildings which shield them from a bucket bomb are provided with a high degree of protection from death or serious injury in case of a bucket bomb explosion for such people we apply building evacuation distances the red circular zone, evacuating them to a distance of 150 feet, roughly 45 meters away from the bucket bomb. However, glass breakage and building debris may still cause some injuries. Therefore, whenever a bucket bomb is found in a building, it is advisable to evacuate the entire building floor and at least the adjacent ones. On the other hand, if there are people who are in the vicinity of a bucket bomb, and cannot enter a building to seek shelter, they should be evacuated to the outdoor evacuation distance, the yellow circular zone, which in our case is 1,850 feet, roughly 560 meters away from the bucket bomb. If evacuation is impossible, all people inside the outdoor evacuation distance should at least shelter in place. As an exercise, we will assume that a bucket bomb explodes at the center of the Piccadilly Circus. We locate on the satellite map the ground zero of the explosion and our software plots two overlapping concentric circular areas centered on ground zero. The yellow circular area has a radius equal to the outdoor evacuation distance that is 1,850 feet, roughly 560 meters. While the red circular area, which is of a radius of 150 feet, roughly 45 meters, is the mandatory evacuation distance. I switch on and off the 3D buildings um, aspect so that I can help you understand better the circular zones plotted by the software. At first sight, the outdoor evacuation distance for a 50 pound ID defined by the Department of Homeland Security seems unrealistically large. If such a bucket bomb had been found at the Piccadilly Circus, according to the proposed outdoor evacuation distances, 
many London city blocks should have been evacuated, causing unnecessarily many exaggerated financial and psychological impacts. However, the Arms Control Center advises that the DHS standards should be applied in all cases, if possible. To further analyze the effects of a bucket bomb modeled in our case as a 50-pound ID, we apply our software to estimate additional risk zones. For example, the turquoise circular zone, which has a radius of 250 feet, roughly 76 meters, indicates the threshold for minor glass cats meaning that uh, people outside that zone are not expected to sustain any risks from glass fracture. Observe the turquoise circular zone. On the other hand, the pink circular zone the pink circular zone, which has a radius of 105 feet, roughly 32 meters, indicates the threshold for mild injuries due to blast and fragments. This is the pink circular zone, the threshold for minor injuries. Finally, the inner zone which has a radius of 70 feet, roughly 21 meters, represents the lethality threshold so that all people inside that central zone, it is the orange zone, all the people inside that orange central zone may sustain lethal injuries. Now, let me zoom out so that you can have the big picture. I will zoom in and out. So, let's summarize our results. We assumed that a 50-pound ID exploded at the center of the Piccadilly Circus. The orange zone indicates an area where people may be killed because of the explosion. The pink zone indicates the area where minor injuries are expected. The turquoise area indicates the threshold for glass cuts. People outside that area are not expected to sustain any injuries because of glass fragments and other blast effects. Orange central zone. Threshold for lethality. Pink zone. Threshold for injuries. Red zone. Mandatory evacuation distance. Turquoise zone minor cuts because of glass fragments and finally the yellow zone the shelter in place distance or the outdoor evacuation distance i am professor theodore leolius thank you for watching our short tutorial on bucket bomb effects and safety measures please remember to support the arms control center and become its member in order to obtain the arms control certificate